So Lens Protocol is the most popular Web3 social tech with about 80,000 users and growing as of recording this video in October of 2022. So I went deep on the research to learn everything about Lens Protocol and I decided to make a comprehensive video. So I broke down the video into these seven chapters. So by the end of the video, you'll know everything about the founding team, what problem Lens Protocol is solving, user statistics, current projects. I'll even go over tech tutorials and I'll just give a summary and I'll even go over juicy questions like, how is this protocol making money? How are people able to monetize their content as content creators and so on. So stick around. So let's go over the founding team. Lens Protocol was first introduced in February of 2022 and is basically led by a guy named Steny Kolechov. And a little bit about the, the founding team itself. Um, the company behind Lens Protocol is actually Ave Company, which was founded in 2017. And Ave is basically a decentralized protocol for lending and borrowing. So if you go to Ave.com and you will launch the app, You'll basically, uh, you need to log in with MetaMask and I already did that. But basically you'll notice that you're able to supply certain cryptocurrency that you have. So I have USDC and ETH on this wallet and um, the annual percentage yield that you're able to get for that. And also uh, you're able to borrow certain assets as well. Certain, basically it's mostly cryptocurrency assets. And um, the impressive thing about Aave is that basically has a total locked value of almost $5 billion um, as we're recording this video in October of 2022, which is a lot of money. So why am I going over Aave? Well, it just shows proof that this team has survived two crypto crashes. It has um, a decentralized protocol um, that is Aave that's doing really well already. And um, this is the main team behind Lens Protocol. So it's quite impressive. So two, why does this protocol exist? What problem is it solving? Well, according to Lens, it's a decentralized protocol that any application can plug into. And actually another core contributor to Lens Protocol, David Silverman, has a great talk on YouTube about the main problems of Web2 social media, which I will link in the description. But basically he summarizes that there are three problems the Lens Protocol is solving. The first problem with Web2 social media platforms like Facebook or TikTok and so on is that the data is centralized. Right, so if you think about uh, Facebook or TikTok, some of you may be popular on there, you might have a lot of content, but can they, they can basically just choose to kick you out at any time and you basically don't own the data. So um, it brings to the second problem actually that uh, David mentions, which is uh, data from social platform to platform is not very easily portable, right? So for example, if uh, maybe back in the day, some people were really popular on Facebook. Well, it's not easy for them to transfer that information to TikTok or to Instagram, or that maybe um, some people were famous on social media platforms that no longer exist. And basically, it's hard to just switch your, uh, move your content, move your followers, move your posts and stuff like that from different platforms. And Lens Protocol solves both of these problems because when you create a post or a comment or even a profile on Lens, uh, the data is actually stored on that blockchain. So it, more specifically, it's actually stored on Polygon sidechain, which is part of the broader Ethereum ecosystem. So if you engineer, you could actually use um, the same common technologies like Solidity or Hardhat and so on and you can hook into the Ethereum ecosystem. And if we take a look at the most popular app on Lens Protocol, uh, we're gonna look at a Lenster.xyz, and you can see it's like a minimalist Facebook or Twitter with a bunch of comments and posts. So let's say a few years from now, we don't like Lenster anymore, and uh, for whatever reason, maybe because they become a bad actor, well, somebody else can basically fork Lenster or they can create another application and it still will basically point to the Polygon sidechain data of all of our followers, our posts, our comments, and so on. So five to 10 years from now, basically, um, if this works, then uh, let's say some of us become popular on Leinster, or we, we grow a following, and then there's maybe another social media platform like TikTok or Substack. Well, we can utilize our followers from Leinster uh, into these other applications because again, Everything's actually stored in the blockchain. And aside from Lenster, other applications have access to this data, which is quite impressive. And the third problem the Lens Protocol is solving is basically the fact that Web2 social media platforms sell your data. And a lot of times it's a trade-off that we're okay with or we just don't even think about. But with Web3, the way um, Lens Protocol has built um, the way you create posts, comments, and so on, you actually, there's actually different mechanisms to monetize our content. Because in Lens Protocol, basically a profile, a post, and comments 
they're all are stored as ERC721 NFT tokens. So technically, people can collect my posts and, and so on, but we'll talk about more in detail in a little bit. So if you navigate over to lens.xyz, navigate towards the uh, basically the documentation that they have, and then you could scroll down and you could see the major concepts. So we have profile, publication, comment, mirror. These are the first four that we will cover. Profile is the same thing as a profile on Twitter or on Facebook and so on. So uh, basically when you go to lens.x, actually, no, we'll go to uh, lens.xyz. And basically you'll be able to claim your handle here and that will be your profile. Um, then publication is the equivalent of a post. So similar to Facebook or Twitter, when you create a post, that is the equivalent of publication. In fact, I use that interchange interchangeably here. The third thing is a comment. Again, it's the same thing as in Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and so on. And the fourth one will, um, is basically mirror and it's, um, the function of it is very similar to a retweet on Twitter. So basically, if I like somebody's content, I can mirror it. Now, the concepts that are quite different here, um, I'll mention just two of them. One is built-in governance. So actually, uh, by default, um, you can spin up a DAO with your profile. And actually, I haven't seen many applications that use uh, DAOs in Lens Protocol. But the most simple example I can think of, let's say there's a famous band that ends up using Lens Protocol. And they basically, they want to know which cities they should visit for the next uh, tour. And they can create a, sort of a voting system using a DAO, uh, using Lens, and then their followers or their loyal audience basically decides which city um, they should be touring next. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more important concepts or use cases that can be built on this. So if you're a builder, I definitely encourage you to check out the documentation. And the other example, that I want to show is actually um, they have modules, which uh, when I was reading this documentation, it was a little bit too abstract for me. However, when I was watching David Silverman's talk from ETH Global on YouTube, he broke it down to very simple terms that I can understand. So basically the three modules, which are follow, collect, and reference. And um, I'll give you a real use case scenario. So let's say we go to my profile, which is um, Andre.lens. I only have two followers, which is kind of sad. Actually, I have zero followers. I have, I'm following two people. And with these modules, what you could do is you can create custom logic. So for example, if I were to grow my following, I can create custom logic where in order to follow me, you have to hold a certain NFT. Or if you want to follow me, for example, I can create custom logic where you have to pay me a certain amount of ETH or Matic or some stable coin. And these actually have very basic examples, but you can easily create a, a case where you can create a sub stack or an OnlyFans using Lens Protocol or whatever your imagination takes you. So if you're a builder or you're tech curious, I highly encourage you to check out documentation and follow certain people on Twitter, um, which I'll mention later for basically inspiration and just get started. Oh, and the last thing I want to mention about modules is that this is basically a different way that creators can monetize their content. And we basically, we might not have to rely on advertising, hopefully at all, but you can see plenty of scenarios where creators or influencers can monetize by selling their posts or by restricting certain content or by just creating new and interesting mechanics. Now let's go over the user statistics and current projects that are using Lens Protocol. So basically, if you go over into GitHub, and uh, again, I will link all of these in the description so you don't have to worry about it. Um, but this individual, Juancito, uh, created a GitHub repository of all the most popular projects that are built on Lens. Um, and we can just scroll to the bottom. And what somebody actually did is they created something called Dune Analytics, which is basically an analytics platform that um, and the way you can analyze certain blockchains. And you'll notice that as of recording this video, there are about 83,000 profile owners. Again, basically, if you go to um, lens.xyz and you claim your handle, that's basically creating a profile. And uh, let's navigate back to GitHub. And actually, we'll navigate towards um, this other dashboard that somebody else created. And we'll notice that out of those 80,000 profiles, about 32,000 people created um, posts with that. Um, so again, if, if we're comparing it to maybe a Web2 platform, these are not impressive numbers, but Web3 is a lot smaller. And um, these are very encouraging statistics that um, I'm personally really excited about. So 
um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. But um, these numbers are continuing to grow every month and um, it's just a very positive trend. Now, if you scroll back to the top, we'll notice again the popular projects. And uh, actually what we're gonna do is we are gonna go over to Leinster again. And let me just do that really quickly. So basically, um, again, I already created my handle and I can go to my profile. And again, um, it's kind of sad, I only have zero followers and I'm following two people. Uh, but let me let me create a post and you see the, the experience is kind of smooth. So um, post for demo. So let me create this post and we'll see what happens and voila. Now you'll notice something interesting and you're like, Andre, why are you impressed? Well, because this is stored in a blockchain and we're able to see that I created post within a few seconds. Now, in Web3, the user experience is actually typically a lot worse. If you ever go to OpenSea or another Web3 application, there's a lot of signing and a lot of waiting, at least 10, 15, 20 seconds for a transaction to go through. Well, what Lens Protocol has done is actually they create, the way they're able to create the this, this seamless experience is something called a dispatcher. And if we go back to their documentation and we look at what the dispatcher does, um, we'll actually notice that a dispatcher, what it does is that, that there's basically an intermediary wallet that signs for us. And uh, basically what that does is that means we don't have to sign using our MetaMask or another kind of wallet application. And it just creates a better seamless UI experience. On top of that, the reason we don't have to wait 10, 15, 20 seconds for a transaction to go through is that they mentioned it here, is that um, the requests are actually optimistic. So if we go back to Leinster, um, using uh, with the front end and the API, when you make a request, it is optimistic. So that means that basically when we make a request that uh, before it's even written in the blockchain, the API and the front end just makes the assumption that the request will go through. Um, and this is a great sort of feature to make this a seamless experience. So if we go back to Monster Profile, what actually happens behind the scenes is the front end and the API are optimistic in that they assume that my post will actually be written on the blockchain. And I assume they have some sort of mechanic that if for some reason there is an error and um, the post doesn't get written on the blockchain, then it will be reverted. But this basically creates a very seamless experience that we typically don't have in Web3. And this is just a great feature. This brings up another question. Who's paying for all this data to be stored for these posts and comments and stuff like that? I mean, it is a lot cheaper in Polygon, but it still costs money. And I actually went to Lens Discord channel and um, actually one of the engineers answered there that Avi company is actually paying for the intermediate wallet to store and update all of the information on the blockchain currently. But in the future, they foresee an example basically where companies and applications like Leinster, basically they'll be footing the bill for this. And their hope is that basically these companies will not go back to the same Web2 social media platforms, um, that they'll create new and better ways to monetize content and just make a better user experience for everybody. Now, if you're not an engineer, you can quickly skip to the next chapter because I'll be doing right now a quick tech tutorial for people that have some coding experience. And next, I'll go over two quick tutorials and Lens actually recently released the developer starter kit. Um, so if you, again, if you go back to the docs of Lens website, there's um, actually the third link currently there's a quick start where, where they basically go over um, ways to create profiles, to explore for profiles and, and stuff like that. And then I believe here, if you go to Lens API, um, actually querying the application, there's two more tutorials that they'll go over. One is using the Apollo client, um, which is basically an awesome library that interfaces with GraphQL and a lighter library called URQL. And in fact, a native David, who is a developer advocate at Lens Protocol, he had a great video on YouTube where he basically goes from start to finish of how he's using Next.js, NPM, and a few other libraries to create um, basically a feed here of different profiles. And then when you click on the profile, basically you're able to sign in and then follow this user, which I'm not gonna do right now because I don't have any Matic, but 
Um, yeah, actually I will link my GitHub repo in the description. I made it a little bit different, but as you can see, it's very ugly CSS styling. And if you look at the actual code, again, it has very basic um, request how to, how to fetch profiles. And then if you go to uh, the profile, it has um, stuff on how to uh, follow a user, how to connect a wallet and stuff like that. Again, this is very similar to Nader David's um, tutorial on YouTube, so we'll link that, um, but I will save us some time and not do this from scratch. But if you look at the libraries, this is using NPM, uh, Next.js, GraphQL, URQL, so it's very basic start if you're interested in getting started. So to summarize everything that I've said so far, uh, again, Lens Protocol is built on a Polygon sidechain and a lot of the architecture is actually using ERC721 NFTs, uh, including profile, posts, and comments. So there's, it basically brings uh, an opportunity to collect these as NFTs and bring different ways of monetizing the content. Now, do I think it's a Facebook or TikTok killer? Well, I don't think the Aave team have that in mind. What they did is basically solve one very big problem of how to decentralize data for social media platforms or for social graphs in general. And it's basically up to us as builders to fill in the holes and figure out ways to monetize the content and to basically create better user experiences uh, that are driving and improving social media experience for us. So for example, uh, many people in Web3 space were complaining about uh, using Discord and how it's annoying. Well, actually, Lens already implemented direct messaging with XMTP. So um, as I mentioned before, with modules, you can custom gate uh, certain experiences and certain profiles and stuff like that uh, using NFTs or other tools. So the technology is basically there to uh, create new interesting ways to collaborate, to create communities and so on. Now there's still a lot of questions about scalability and monetization of this platform. However, when you look back at it, uh, Facebook and Twitter and all these other platforms, people were, those were basically very big critiques for all of these social media platforms. And for many of them, it took them five to 10 years to figure it out. So I don't think it's, uh, it, it's a criticism, but um, it's a very young platform that is still less than a year old. And if they do end up getting millions of users um, that they'll need to store their data on Polygon, there'll be a very good problem for them to have, and I'm sure they'll try to figure something out. Now, something to keep in mind is that Lens Protocol by default stores everything publicly in a blockchain, uh, more specifically in the Polygon sidechain. However, um, there are ways to encrypt this data and make it basically more anonymous or more secure, maybe similar to a single app. So all of these are possibilities and I'm really curious what's gonna happen in your future. Hopefully this was useful for you. Please follow me on uh, andre.lens uh, using Lens for another application. Uh, I might actually start posting there because I really wanna start experimenting with this platform and seeing what's possible. Thank you and have a good day. See ya.